This is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right. Um, so, I, I don't know, I feel like we revisit a lot of the same things in medicine, and there's like new things we can you know, revisit or old things that we forgot about for you know, enough years have gone by that we can revisit. Um, but there's a couple of refractory CHF techniques I just want to talk about that I find kind of interesting. Some of them are not new. Some of them seem very foreign to us. Um, and it's kind of interesting. But um, these are definitely not first line. We kind of have the standard things that we've been doing. You know, nitrates, for example, have gotten more of a big push because it reduces a lot of the preload on the heart. So nitrates have definitely become first line as far as, you know, the acute CHF exacerbation. They come in with pulmonary edema, a you know, hard time breathing. Um, and then obviously Lasix and diuresis, but even Lasix has kind of gotten pushed back a little bit as far as it's not as important as far as, you know, if you can reduce some of that preload, make sure their oxygenation is good, consider positive pressure ventilation. Lasix does need to ha happen, but it's not necessarily like right away. So, um, speaking of Lasix though, there's a study that looks for these patients who are refractory. I think it's usually more admitted um, and probably without access to as many resources, but um, patients who um, have gotten these trials of hypertonic saline as well as high dose LASIK. So, um, as a provider, sometimes you know we see these patients that come in. They tend to have some renal insufficiency, and we kind of labor of like, oh, is 80 of LASIK too much? Are we going to like fry out their kidneys? In this study, these patients were getting up to 500 milligrams of LASIK, or, and so it was just high, high doses. They kind of randomized. There's like 125. There's 250. And there's 500s. They're also given hypertonic saline, which I think has a lot of protection over their kidneys, but at the same time you're not giving them as much fluid as you would with like a, you know, a whole liter of normal saline. So with this hypertonic saline, you know, the, I think the protocols were like 125 cc's plus like, you know, up to 500 milligrams of Lasix and actually showed pretty good efficacy and fairly good safety profile. Again, probably not something we'll be doing in the ER, but just something I think it's good to be kind of aware of some of these things. So when we maybe see a patient come in who had that, especially from a rural facility, or, you know, you look on a chart from an admitted patient, you're like, holy cow, well, you know, they've, they've got kidney failure. Why do they get this? And, you know, maybe some rationale of why they would get such crazy doses. Um, other things that could be done in the ER, I've envisioned this more in kind of a rural, you know, ER somewhere where maybe you have delayed access or we're holding patients. Um, but again, if you can reduce some of that preload, all the blood flow that's getting returned to the heart, that may help out your patient with congestive heart failure. So uh, one technique is phlebotomy. Um, just taking off about you know, 500 cc's of blood and doing that five to 10 minutes. Um, so just take away the blood and it's, it's pretty helpful on the heart. So you know, they're volume overloaded. That's the quickest way to get volume off. Some patients, a lot of CHF patients probably can't tolerate that. They're already probably baseline anemic. Um, another therapy that people have tried, it's unclear how or efficacious it is, is um, doing three different blood pressure cuffs at once. And I don't know, has anybody come across this? I've never seen this one. Uh, but basically you just inflate blood pressure cuffs on three of the four extremities, leave it like between 40 and 60 on three of those four for 10 minutes, and then you keep rotating. So there's always one extremity free, but then the other three have a tourniquet on there. And the thought is that if you can kind of hold some of that blood in the venous side on each of those extremities, that's a fair amount of blood that you're offsetting from them returning to the heart. Kind of like phlebotomy, but not permanently taking it away from them. So uh, probably not really much harm in that other than, you know, they're probably going to whine about constantly having a tourniquet on three of their four extremities. However, you know, it may be efficacious on reducing that. And again, that's kind of a last ditch effort or pre-hospital or rural you know, medicine kind of thing to try. But again, if we saw a patient come in with that, at least you can understand the, the rationale or the thought behind it unclear how well it works. So anyways, that's it.